Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Movies by McManus podcast, the podcast where we break down movies, comics, TV, books, whatever kind of media you're into, in the context of who created it and what effect it's trying to have on the world. And um, we're doing a short video today. We're um, trying to get you update on everything as soon as possible uh, because there is a press conference um, at 1030 this morning where we have found the identity of one of the victims from Gilgo Beach. Um, Mike, I don't know if you want to take it from here, uh, and I'll interject. I know you have a lot to say on the subject. Uh, well, in what continues to be just an amazing turn of events, um, as far as it relates to this case, you know, the Gilgo Beach case the long island serial killer um it kind of feels like an avalanche of momentum happening now um even before uh you know even before the arrest of rex Huerman, we had like we previously mentioned the release of the uh megan waterman video from the hop hog hotel we had the release of um the shannon gilbert phone call uh and eventually the arrest of Rex Hewerman. Um, one thing that has been endlessly speculated on since Rex Hewerman's arrest is, is he, you know, just responsible for the Gilgo Four, even though they still haven't technically charged him for Maureen yet. Um, but is he related to the rest of the, the killings and the rest of the killings included, um, some other folks outside of the Gilgo Four, which have been previously unidentified. Um, in recent years, they have identified Valerie Mack. Um, that was in 2020. And today, uh, we have the identity being released by press conference this morning from the Suffolk County DA, Ray Tierney, the identity of Jane Doe number seven, more commonly referred to as Fire Island Jane Doe. Yep. Um, as 34 year old Karen Vergata, um, who, from what I understand, grew up on Long Island, and her last known address was in Manhattan on 45th Street. Um, I want to give a shout out to um, Catch Lisk, um, who has been following the case very closely on Twitter, who I've been um, following myself for a while. Uh, he had put out last night that there was a media advisory um, for um, a press conference uh, announcing an update in the ongoing investigation. Uh, that was, as Greg mentioned, um, 1030 this morning, um, and we'll get into a little bit of the information uh, of which there is not much at this point in time related to um, the victim, Karen. Um, but Greg, just another just another instance of, again, what feels like kind of an avalanche of momentum here. Yeah, well, I'm I'm 100 percent like I'm I'm happy that, you know, you could put a name to one of the victims, you know, um, in a, in our kind of list. Of, we, we now have we still have three who we don't know the identity of. Um, and it and it and it is great that it's the list has gone down from four to three. Uh, you you know you could finally put um a name to and and it's no longer victim it's it's a person now you know and we understand you know obviously it was always a person but now you know she has a face she has a name and um it, it was interesting to me that kind of they knew the identity um they already knew her identity from 2022 and that they were kind of waiting to they said they were waiting to contact the family members but i can't imagine that um they weren't at least in some point waiting for the arrest of rex to happen before um releasing this information because i know part of the speculation of um why they arrested him now was because they were afraid of him getting spooked and and leaving and leaving the state so i imagine that they wanted to put out 
as little information that they had uh, to the public before the actual arrest was made. Um, so I'm hopeful now that the arrest happened, that we have one of the uh, previously unidentified victims now has a face and a name. I'm hoping that we find the identity of Peach's toddler, an Asian male, um, as as soon as possible, because, um, you know, a... It's 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 tough. I I don't like just referring to P to victims as like a Jane Doe or you know in peaches or you know specifically with Asian male because I'm not really a fan of like that name that they've kind of given that victim and it and it's much better to like finally have you know it's it's a person now we know who this is. Um, Another thing, I I believe ABC was saying this when they were covering it, of matching Rex's DNA to this new victim now. It's something that I didn't know was um, his DNA was used um, to compare against DNA on the Gilgo 4, but hasn't been used yet um on the rest of the victims they can't compare the dna yet because of some uh state like register law or something like that um i i briefly like saw them mention that on abc um so i it's definitely seems very possible that rex was responsible for this killing and possibly the other um the other killings outside of the gilgo four as well I had heard that they can't enter his DNA into the CODIS system, yeah. uh, which is that can't happen uh, until you're federally convicted uh, of a crime. Uh, and then you have to enter your DNA into that system and then they can test you against, you know, other states, other yeah. other crimes. Um, I'm 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 not sure if they can. I, I, I think they can test him against other local victims um, mm. if they have that ident um, those the, the DNA in those cases, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but, you know, there isn't a ton of information available, but the information that did come out, we just want to kind of quickly go over here. Um, yeah. Again, this is this is breaking news. This is only a matter of a couple of hours ago. Um, so this is from um, ABC, and we'll just kind of go through a couple of these points here. Um, Gilgo Beach murder victim Jane Doe 7 identified 27 years after she went missing. Uh, Karen Vergata, 34, um, identified using DNA genetic genealogy. You know, we have been talking ad nauseum about that. Um, I think at this point it's very likely, Greg, that they are going to identify the rest of the victims because of the, the genetics. Um, the identification is the latest breakthrough in the notorious Gilgo Beach killings in which at least 11 sets of human remains were found near Ocean Parkway. Jane Doe 7's remains were located in Davis Park on Fire Island in 1996. Then 15 years later, DNA later linked them to another set of human remains found April 11, 2011. Uh, Tierney, that's Ray Tierney, the district attorney from Suffolk County, said Friday that Vergata went missing February 14th, 1996, had lived in Manhattan and was thought to be working as an escort. No missing persons complaint was filed at the time of her disappearance. Um, unfortunately, we've heard that before. Um, I'm going to jump around a little bit back to um, Catch Lisk. Um, that's at Catch underscore Lisk on Twitter. Uh, he's broken this down quite well. Uh, Karen Vergata slash Fire Island Jane Doe. On April 20th, 1996, legs were found in a black garbage bag at Blue Point Beach in the vicinity of Davis Park on Fire Island in Suffolk County. On April 12th, 2011, her skull was found off Ocean Parkway west of Tobe Beach in Nassau County. Her, t her torso and hands were never recovered. She was described as a white female between the age of 18 to 50, no height or weight estimate given. Right lower leg has a scar. Um, there's another surgical scar on her left ankle. 
they found uh, her feet had red nail polish on the toes. Um, the law enforcement officer who found the legs told the reporter the nail polish from the pedicure was still fresh. That's pretty mm -hmm. creepy. Uh -huh. um, in 2023, these remains were identified through genealogical DNA as Karen Vergata. Karen was born. Um, this is always an amazing moment. I remember when this happened with Valerie Mack, where all of a sudden this big mystery, you know, is broken and you get the identity of the person and, and some details start coming in. Yeah. Karen was born November 4th, 1961, and was 34 years old at the time of her disappearance. Um, brown hair, brown eyes, uh, five foot something and 110 pounds. Okay. That fits. Yeah. You know, yeah. That fits the description of the other victims. Uh, her father last heard from her on his birthday on Valentine's day, 1996, when she was living on West 45th street in New York city, Karen and her family are originally from Glenhead, New York. That's on long Island for everyone not familiar she went to St. Mary's Elementary School in Roslyn and graduated from high school in Glenhead in 1979. At some point after high school, she was living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She was arrested in 1983 in New Orleans, Louisiana on drug charges. She may have spent a year in prison for this offense. In November 1983, she was indicted by a federal grand jury of selling diet pills in Connecticut with five other individuals. In June 1987, she also has federal charges that are undisclosed and were dismissed in July 1991. In from around 1989 to 1992 and perhaps longer, she was living on Ocean Avenue in Brooklyn. She has a son who was eight years old at the time of her death. Um, born sometime in 1989, oh. <laughs> so he's my age. Um, oh, Jesus, uh, you know, shout out to him. I hope he's doing well. Yeah. Um, the only the only reason I laughed is because of the 1989. That's it, no, no, I, um, yeah. Um, so, uh, both her and her son, who was a toddler at the time, were involved in a car accident, which may be the reason for the surgical scars on her legs. In July 2017, her father had officially declared her deceased. In that legal filing, the father states that he spoke to multiple law enforcement agencies to try to report her missing, hired a private investigator to determine her whereabouts, and spoke to several acquaintances of hers. Law enforcement considers her a victim of the Long Island serial killer. Um, not a whole lot of surprises in hearing that background. Your it, thoughts? It's, it's also... Um... In the press conference that, you know, it was specifically said that a missing person's uh, report was not filed. Um, and, you know, it's it's not surprising that um, the victim's father tried to file one and couldn't because we know from the Gilbert family that filing a missing person's report is not as easy as it's made out to be um, that, you know, we know from the Gilbert family that there actually was a lot of um, backlash against them um, and a lot of roadblocks um, to filing that missing persons report for Shannon. Um, are you are you aware or or like, is there a way you could find out offhand how far that West 54th um how far that is from Rex's uh, office or was he even in that office at that time? Cause that would be interesting to know how far that was from his actual office. Um, so there's a couple of questions, which would be, um, you know, where, where was he working at the time? I had heard this morning on another show that he, uh, he, the house in Massapequa that everyone has seen a million times now is the house he grew up in and he bought that house from his mother in 1994. So, and I had heard, I don't know if this is true, but I heard on a news station this morning that before he purchased, he re he purchased his own childhood home. He had been living in New Jersey. That's the first time I had heard that. Mm -hmm. um, however, 
obviously 1994. He's in Massapequa. Um, he has said in that very infamous interview now with the French um, uh, podcaster on YouTube that he'd been working in Manhattan since 1987. We also know from some of his searches that have been his online searches that have been released that he had been looking for, um, you know, escorts in Manhattan. Um, you know, some of Melissa Bartholomew was in the Bronx. Um, Maureen Brainerd Barnes was taken from Manhattan. So this is right in his MO in terms of where he would have been at the time. Again, yeah, living on Long Island in 1996, working in Manhattan in 1996 because he's been working there since 87. Um, it would be interesting to know if he was uh, single or divorced at the time because he did have the two marriages. Um Obviously, we know that either way, that doesn't necessarily mean he couldn't uh, have carried out this killing as well. Um, I got to tell you, man, um, and his 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 office was near Midtown. I'm um, near. Uh, so it's 36th Street near Midtown Manhattan. OK, um, um, I mean, I guess it's not that far. But also, I mean, some of them were picked up in the Bronx. So, you know, um, I mean, I, yeah, that's I mean, uh, look. it's I mean, I'm not 100 percent convinced yet that Rex was responsible, but like the signs are kind of pointing that way. You know, the the signs are it's it, it's sort of pointing that way. I'm not fully you know i i'm i'm not fully like uh convinced yet but it it, it definitely is fitting i he certainly can't be ruled out for obvious reasons um and also i don't know i mean i i i was pretty strongly of the mind that like the gilgo 4 i leaned toward the gilgo 4 and the rest of the remains not being related um but you have, you know, the location, you have um, the fact that the, you know, the, the the woman is right in the wheelhouse of the physical description of the other victims. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. really looking like it could be him. Obviously, we're not going to, you know, we're not, we, we won't know definitively until we can link DNA. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we just wanted to bring this um, to your uh, to your attention, guys. And um, there's not a ton of information. As more information becomes available, uh, we will obviously keep everyone um, aware. Just one thing I also want to quickly touch on, um, and our friend Josh Zeman uh, posted this earlier this morning, um, to Greg's point, uh, and I think it was the right move. They had made this identification towards the end of last year and they waited to tell the families. And then because they were going through the grand jury process for the Rex Heuerman case, um, they didn't, they wanted to wait until that was out in the public. Um, but Josh pointed out that a website called Murder Inc. Um, had posted back in doesn't have a date but it says months ago that murder inc figured out um who she was months ago so murder inc has interesting on fe on february 16th i think they got that wrong i think it's the 14th but on february 16th 1996 karen vergata called her father on long island for his birthday he never heard from her again her last known address was on west 45th street in new york uh, Manhattan. Karen Vergata was 35. She wasn't. She was 34 years old when she disappeared and had grown up in Glenhead, New York. Um, and then it gives a description of the case. Um, this is uh, this is kind of bizarre. In 1981, a strange classified ad appeared in a Fort Lauderdale newspaper saying, "Karen Vergata, I care. I care and love you. Please contact me, Jim Peacock." Uh, who was Jim Peacock and why was he leaving a classified ad looking for Karen Vergata, who wouldn't go missing for another 15 years? Um, so I thought that was interesting that some Internet sleuth had um, put two and two together that 
you know, Fire Island, Jane Doe may very well be Karen Vergata. Um, yeah. Turns out they were correct. Um, but again, just another uh, another crazy day in, in this, um, the unfolding of this case. No, um, definitely. And um, I, and I'm I'm glad that we don't have to call her, you know, Fire Island Jane Doe anymore. You know, we could use her actual name and, um, you know, talk about this woman properly um, rather than so um, the, there's just something so cold about using a, um, a I don't know the correct word, a Jane Doe name or an Asian male name. It's just um, it, it makes you forget for a second that they're people. And I'm glad that we finally have. Uh, a human being to attach to this um yeah and hopefully you know the rest of the information yeah. comes out soon as well yeah hopefully um okay so we just wanted to get that um to you um if you like this video um we you know we normally do movie reviews and stuff but our last couple of videos have been related to this case just so just because it it hits so home to us um you know rex Hewerman was from our hometown um and this was and this was such a shocking thing for all of long island um uh if you like this video check out the rest of our channel check us out on social media on instagram uh and tiktok uh spotify at movies by mcmanus um I'm Greg, my brother Mike as always, and, uh, and have a good night.